gosh, I'm rusty. Please rise. Behold, the Lord, the mighty one, has come, and kingship is in his grasp and power and dominion. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first Noel, the angel did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay tending their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep Noel, 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 born is the King of Israel. They looked up, a star shining in. to the earth it gave great light and so it continued both day and night no In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, I confess to, to Almighty God, God, and to and you, to you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts, in my thoughts and, and in my words, words in what, what I have I done, done and, and what, what I have I failed, failed to do through my fault, through my fault, fault through my most gracious, my grievous fault. Grievous fault. Therefore, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, Mary ever Virgin, Virgin, all of the all angels, angels and, and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And, and on, on earth, earth peace to people, people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, you we adore you, we glorify you, you. We, we give you thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord God, God heavenly, heavenly King, King O God, God Almighty, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten, begotten Son, Son, Lord God, God Lamb, Lamb of God, God Son, Son of the, the Father, Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy, have mercy on us. You take, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May the splendor of your majesty, O Lord, we pray, shed its light upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadows of this world and reach the brightness of our eternal home. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba, shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. 
May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor, the lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it is, has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. 
They prostrated themselves and did him homage. They opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Know, dear brethren, that as we have rejoiced at the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, so by leave of God's mercy we announce to you also the joy of his resurrection, who is our Savior. On the 17th day of February will fall Ash Wednesday, and at the beginning of the feast of the most sacred Lenten season, on the fourth day of April, you will celebrate with Easter Day, with joy Easter Day, the Paschal Feast of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the 16th day of May will be the Ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the 23rd day of May, the Feast of Pentecost. On the sixth day of June, the Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ. On the 28th day of November, the first Sunday of Advent of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom is honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The announcement of the Easter and what we know as the movable feast is what you just heard. So if you don't have your calendar ready, luckily I gave you the dates in advance. Now, the epiphany of our Lord. It's a Greek-based word. It's the manifestation of God. It's where these magicians, or lack of a better word, magi, these smart people have come to the nativity with the realization that this is the Son of God. Not like an emperor, not like a Herod, not like a, anything else, but a baby in a feeding trough. This is who we are talking about with Jesus, and this is who these magi found out about when they arrived where the star had brought them. What should we take from this? What are we to get from this? How are we to put this in perspective? Well, as St. Matthew tells us, we already get the setting for Jesus, and it's in the reign of King Herod. Now, to be clear, there's a lot of Herods that are in Israel, okay? This is one that is in his early, Jesus' early life. There will become several Herods after him. But this particular Herod was reigning in Israel as the king. Of course, he was kind of a, a parrot to the Roman Empire since they had this relationship of the empire ruling over the territory. But Herod had a say in the authority of the time of it. Uh, of, of Israel. And so the Magi were asking the question, they came from the east, where is this newborn king of the Jews? You know, when Pilate crucifies Christ or sends him to his crucifixion, he makes it clear for all the world to know who Jesus was, right? Jesus Christ, king of the Jews. It's where we abbreviate the I-N-R-I, which is the Latinate abbreviation for Jesus Nazareth, King of Jews. Now, where is the newborn King of the Jews? Well, that's got to scare somebody. And apparently it scares everybody. It scares Herod, because he thinks his job's up for grabs. Which it wasn't his to begin with, but hey. But then everybody else is terrified. Why? Why would everybody else, all the Jews with him, were greatly troubled? Hmm. Well, biblically speaking, if the Messiah is coming, you're either with him or you're without him. You're either excited because you've been waiting for this moment like Simeon and Anna were in the temple, or it's the I got to get my stuff together moment because I haven't been living the right way. You know, we do that a lot, too. We, 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 we pathetic kind of humans, you know. Um, 
it's, it's sort of the equivalent of knowing that Christ is going to rise from the dead. And so in Lent, we're like, oh, i got to do that confession bit. Out of fear. Out of fear. And maybe there's something to be said, true too, about the fact that everybody was greatly troubled because they don't know how the Messiah is going to come. There's a lot of speculation about how the Messiah is going to come. Just read any of the rabbinic texts. A lot of what was said was going to be a military takeover. An invasion of sorts, perhaps. But that's not what we find, is it? Because C.S. Lewis talks about Jesus being born clandestinely behind enemy lines. It wasn't like he rolled in with tanks. Or an army of men on horseback and in armor. So, in a way, yeah, they had every right to think they would be troubled because they thought it was going to be a hostile takeover. But yet, the Magi encounter something very different. They follow a star and they find a family. Within that family, this child. And this child, they brought gifts. A kingly gift, a priestly gift, and a gift of, in relation to death. The fact that they know something is special about this particular baby, unlike any other child, and that the death of this child would mark something, something unheard of before. But back to what we were saying. King Herod heard this. He was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes, he inquired, where is this baby? And of course, the prophecy is in fact true. Bethlehem, land of Judah. You're not the least among the rulers. From you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Of course, now everything has to be done in secret. <laughs> because that's how a good coup would work, right? Well, he calls the, Herod calls the Magi to himself. And using their expertise, their knowledge about the star, how did this come about? Where is the star going to appear? Using their skills, he then commands them, search diligently for him. And then come back and tell me when you found him. And of course he says that I too may go and do him homage. Now, we could cut to the quick, because we know what happens further down the road. It doesn't look like he's going to do him homage. In fact, he's going to kill every baby. <laughs> That's why we celebrate and honor the holy innocents, the ones that died because Herod was terrified of this one, this Christ. They gave up their life in that respect. So they go and set out, and they see the star. These magi keep seeing the star. They keep following the star, stopping over this place. And they are overjoyed at seeing the star. I don't know if you've ever been on an exploration or on a journey. It's always good to know you're on the right track. <laughs> I've done some trails and trips in my life where, you know, in Colorado we have these little, like they call Karens, these little rocks topped on rocks, topped on rocks that kind of look like a little pyramid of sorts, and it keeps you on course. Now you can, and that's at least looking down at the ground and knowing how you follow that way. But if you're following a star in the sky, you need to know the position and the direction. Because at night, if you don't know where north is, you ain't going to figure out any other direction. In Colorado, we kind of have it made with the mountains on the west. But say you're dropped in, you know, the mountains at night. You don't know which way is north unless you know where the stars are. And to be on course, to see the star, to enter the house where the star is above, shining below, they have this moment of realization, a moment of prostration. They, you know, there's, there's postures that we have as people that are spiritually designed, in a sense. They're religious postures. Um, standing, kneeling, and prostrating. Effectively, sitting isn't really a religious posture. 
It's actually an authoritative posture. By that I mean, back in the day, nobody really had a chair because those were kind of expensive because you had to make them. They're not ready to have. So if you're out in the praetorium, like um, you would have been screaming at Jesus to you know, crucify him as they were in, in that scene, everybody stands, but the authority figure is seated. That's why a bishop, when he preaches, he preaches from his chair, more than likely. It's an authority position. But other positions, the standing, because everybody's in agreement, everybody's together. The kneeling, the, the kind of reverence that comes with, I'm beneath you. And then to just am amplify that, to get on the ground, just be on your stomach. Very humble position. You know, that's the position that's um, seen in seldom locations. Um, Orthodox are pretty good at prostration, but uh, us Romans are not. And when we do them, we do them in certain instances. Um, I can tell you at least I've had to prostrate myself in liturgical circumstances for the ordination of being a deacon, uh, the ordination of being a priest, and then every Good Friday, as the liturgy of the Triduum, the second part of that movement, the Good Friday, as I would enter in with the deacon, we then lay prostrate before our crucified Lord. And that kind of respect, that kind of reverence, is exemplified in people that aren't expressly believing in the God of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, for all we know. But they know that something greater than them is there. And so they open their, we use the word treasures in English, they open their gifts. And then I said those gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. A kingly gift, a priestly gift, and a gift for death. You know, as Christians, we are in that life of Christ where we are priests, prophets, and kings, all of which is to make sure that we die in Christ as to live with Christ. And so when, we're, um, when we go through any sacraments of initiation, we're anointed ones, you know, we're anointed at baptism with two oils, a holy oil for, uh, on our chest if we're babies, to give strength. We're anointed on the crown of our head with chrism, that wonderful ar aromatic oil, signifying priestly, kingly roles, prophetic roles. Also, we're anointed again on the forehead at confirmation to strengthen us in our Christian mission and for thus ordained as priests and some as bishops, that anointing is amped up. You know, effectively my hands in these liturgical contexts do not become just my hands, they become Christ's hands. Because I am in that person of Christ praying to the Father. And so my hands would be anointed. And trust me, when the bishop anointed my hands, he, he didn't spare any oil. <laughs> he, he had... It was just, you know, sitting there and it just poured. And then, you know, after he rubbed in the, car the chrism, just let it sit. And then my hands were like this for a while with a cloth wrapped around it that I'd eventually give to my mom um, as her symbol of giving Jesus a priest. You know, and then the bishops, it's, it's on their head. You know, these, these kingly priestly offices. So all of that's bound into the life in Christ and the death in Christ for the resurrection in Christ. Now, when we encounter Christ, as does the Magi, something has to change. Because they had an instinct, which is probably a good one, to suggest maybe we ought not go back to Herod. Maybe he doesn't have the best thing in mind. And it seemingly is true, right? And that's conversion for you. That's what happens in, in conversion. When we have encountered God so much so that our life to its very existence, to its very root, is different. And as a consequence of being different, it's not going to remain the same. And therefore, we have to do something else. So for example, when I initially found my life in Christ, in terms of conversion, I could say to you in a way that I could not go back the same way I came. And it might have been a sophisticated way, 
like the Magi, following the star. I had fought my way into God. I read books. But that wasn't enough. Because Jesus told me to go some, do something very different. To go and do something very different from what I was used to. And I had to trust him to guide me. And that's true of each and every one of us. Do you trust Jesus enough to lead you where he wants you to go? Because that's what he did with the Magi. That's what he does with every person who is drawn near to him. That manifestation of God's love is in that moment right there with the Magi, with Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. They knew, they, the Magi, knew that unlike anyone else they've ever encountered, this one is super special. This one is beyond anything they've ever experienced meeting. And the, the warnings they receive in a dream compel them to go to their own place in another way. May you and I, in the grace of the Eucharist this day, encounter Jesus so much so, like the Magi. May we offer him those gifts that are dear to us, that show him he is Lord and we are not. May we be humble enough to know that he is the Lord. May we follow him. May he convert our heart. And with whatever thing he tells us, however we are to depart here, may it be under his care and direction and not our own devising. Behold, the Lord, the Mighty One, has come, and kingship is in his grasp and power and dominion. I believe in, in one, one God, the Father, the Father Almighty, the Almighty, maker of maker heaven, of heaven and, earth, and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the only begotten God, Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God, God from God, God, light from light, true God, God from true God, God. begotten, begotten not made, not made consubstantial, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us, for us men and for our, for our salvation. salvation. He came, came down, down from heaven, and, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became, and became man. For, For our sake, sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered death and was buried, and, and rose again, again on the third day, day in, accordance in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Gathered here, we share a living tradition, a glorious promise. While the light of Christ continues to shine for all peoples, let us pray for men and women of all language, races, and cultures. For the Holy Catholic Church, that she may welcome all who seek peace and truth in her fold, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of a world in darkness, that their leaders may be drawn to the dawning, of bright, dawning brightness of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for a universal charity, that all bigotry, narrowness, and racism may be driven from our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of humble worship in our own lives, that we may adore Jesus in the Eucharist with devotion of the Magi who brought gifts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, especially Reed Chester, Joanne Clark, Ken Martinez, Sharon Stewart, Anita Timmons, and Bob Groney. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, that the, Lord, that the eternal light may shine on them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For the prayer that each of us holds in the silence of our hearts, And for the intention of today's Mass, the repose of the soul of Jean Sharoni. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, your Son is light from light, your glowing sign to all nations. As we pray for the peoples of your world, help us to strengthen the bonds of unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthem sweet, while shepherds watch our keeping? This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds ward and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christians fear for sinners here. The silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring incense, gold and myrrh, compass and king to own him, the king of kings, salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, our offerings in honor of the appearing of your only begotten Son and the first fruits of the nations that to you praise may be rendered and eternal salvation be ours through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. 
we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you for your, firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Samuel, our Bishop, Jorge, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son eternal with you in gl your glory, appeared in a human body, truly sharing our flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took his precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection of the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sit in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen the highest Barnabas, Ignatius Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art, who in, art heaven, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord.
be with you always. And with your spirit, Father. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should, should enter under, under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse afar field and fountain moor and mountain following yonder star oh, oh star of wonder star of light star Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, see 
sing never over us all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still proceeding guide us to thy perfect light frankincense to offer have i incense owns a deity nigh prayer and praising voices raising worshiping god on high oh, oh star of wonder star of light star with royal beauty bright westward leading still proceeding guide us to thy perfect light myrrh is mine its bitter perfume breathes a life of gathering gloom sorrowing sighing bleeding dying crown a stone cold tomb oh, oh star of wonder star of light star with royal beauty bright westward leading still proceeding guide us to thy perfect light Let us pray. Renew thy sacred nourishment, we humbly implore your mercy, O Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our minds, and that our, that our true treasure may ever consist in our confession of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple uh, announcements for you. It's been a joy to celebrate this season with you. I hope you have enjoyed coming. Uh, yeah, it's just been fun. I know things are of the turbulent realities, but um, I have a gift for you because if the Magi brought gifts, I should bring gifts to you. So as you walk out, you're going to find a, a baggie. That's the technical term for it, a baggie. And in the bag is holy water, freshly blessed, epiphany water, so super duper holy water, if you will, and chalk, and a little paper. And if you've ever done this, you should remember this, but if you didn't do it or ever do it, guess what? You now get to. One per family, and you'll bless your house. This is the traditional time in which we bless the house, and this is, I would happily go to your house, and I'm sure you would love to have me, but in the world of pandemic and uh, whatevers, it's probably best that the head of the house bless the home. And there's instructions on the back of that page. With, so there's a picture, and on the back is have the how-tos. And so whoever it is can help you do that. And so they'll be at the exits. You should be able to grab them wherever they are um, as you walk out today. And if they're not, I'll immediately go get them because that's just what... Pastor Land is like these days, running around with my head cut off. Mm -hmm. So, there's that. And just thank you as well for your generosity and support for the parish. Sensitive microphone. Um, and all that. It's been a very good joy. It's been a wonderful Christmas season as a pastor here at this parish. Um, so just from my heart to yours, it's been a joy to pray for you and uh, pray that you encounter Christ. So, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing.
<clears throat> May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out kindness, power, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you, and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you, too, a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so, when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Pray thanks be to God. St. Michael, the be Archangel, Archangel, defend us in the battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God Amen. rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all of the evil spirits who prowl about this world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. As with gladness men of old did the guiding star behold, as with joy they hailed its light, Leading onward, beaming bright, so must glorious Lord may we evermore be led to Thee. As they offered gifts most rare at that manger rude and bare, so may we with holy joy, pure and free from sins alloy, all our costliest treasures bring, Christ to thee, our heavenly King. I think maybe if we can just like maybe hop on the phone or hop on Zoom call or something if there's stuff we want to share or you know maybe a 